right. Yeah, I mean, we gotta summarize. Series 12 is over. I'll have the ranking video up later this week, but first, let's do an overview on Series 12. And I do want to do that separate from the ranking, because when I do the ranking of the episodes, that is looking at them just relative to each other. It's not putting the series in context of anything greater than itself, so that's why I do that separate. So, talking about the series overall, broad strokes. This is an improvement on Series 11. Almost across the board, I felt like most of the uh, individual episodes were stronger. I felt that they managed to find uh, an overall progression that worked well. I still don't love the mystery box element, and I really don't love what was revealed at the end of that mystery box. Um, but we'll, we'll kind of come back to that. So the overall quality of this thing is up quite a bit from Series 11. Like, I haven't done a, a, a re-ranking of the series um, since uh, the end of Series 10 was the last time I did it. And I don't know if I'm going to do a ranking of them overall yet. I, I, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Not anytime soon. But Series 11 is down towards the bottom. Like, I, it may be the bottom, I don't know, but it's down there. It is rough. Series 12 is a big step up. Like, even both in, in terms of batting average and in terms of how high were the highs, how low were the lows. So, for me, the low point of Series 12, that was Orphan 55. That was really, really rough. But you know what? Even that, as much as it didn't work, didn't infuriate me the way Arachnids in the UK did. So the worst episode of Series 12 is not as bad as the worst episode of Series 11. Not for me, at any rate. Whereas some of the high points, I would say, definitely meet, if not exceed, Series 11. For me, Series 11 only had two truly excellent episodes, and those were It Takes You Away and Demons of the Punjab. And then, like, there were a couple of that were good, and then there was a lot of meh. And there's a lot more good to great in this series. I love Can You Hear Me? I liked Skyfall quite a bit. The Haunting of Villa did, did it, the, the, whatever it was, that came out really well, despite my having big issues with one specific bit that went on with it. That was still really good. Ascension of the Cyberman was a great buildup. As much as I didn't like the reveal and the secret from The Timeless Children, that was still a really solid finale episode. And it's just got more good going on here. And even stuff that for this series is more middling, like for me, the Nikola Tesla episode or Praxius, they're still better than a lot of the middling stuff from series 11. So like the whole bar feels like it has been raised quite a bit. And <sighs> I'm... I'm a little bit annoyed to have to say this because, and I'm going to say it in a specific way. The series, the series, series 12, benefited from a series arc. That is not me reversing my stance on mystery boxes. I will continue to say that while the show has benefited from a series arc, mystery boxes are not the only way to do it. Find another trajectory to do a connecting story. I'm just sick of the format. So sick of it. So I'll continue to make that complaint, regardless of what the mystery box is uh, uncovering. But 
as much as I had thought, you know, the show should be doing more standalone stuff, part of what benefited Series 12 was having more of a sense of overall trajectory. And there were a number of things that add to that. Bringing the Master back was a solid start because it left you wondering, God, when's that going to come back? And then Fugitive of the G Dune introducing Ruth and like, what is going on? So much is so weird. And then Jack and the idea of the Lone Cyberman and that gets that gets name checked. And then we see the guy and he's awesome and he's creepy. And then essentially the Cyberman, but like, how? Ha! It was a really good progression and the interconnectedness. And even as far as a mystery box goes, I did kind of like that there were multiple elements that were stringing us along that wasn't just repeating the timeless child, the timeless child, the timeless child. Oh, here's what the timeless child is. Which is the format that these mystery boxes tend to fall into. There was a little bit more to that when it was dropping things like the Master and Jack and the Lone Cybermen that were pulling us along, along the thread of the same story, but they were different things as opposed to just repeating the same thing that we don't have context for and don't know what it is. And I also liked that, you know, Jack name, dro name drops the Lone Cybermen, and then it's only a few episodes later that we see the thing. So it's not like he said it in episode one, and then we finally see it in episode ten. No, the the gap, there were episodes that effectively ultimately ended up being filler episodes, you know, Praxius, Nikola Tesla, uh, Orphan 55, but the, the filler just sort of gave us a little breath between the introduction of an idea and some degree of payoff for, all, for some of these things. And that, that was pretty well structured overall season-wise. Uh, yeah, but okay, so the timeless child, the doctor is the timeless child. The timeless child is an unknown being. That is why the <sighs> Time Lords can regenerate, which means that all of Time Lords society is basically built on the back of the doctor and whether the doctor remembers that or not, that makes the doctor effectively a mythic god figure. Thing is, though, as much as I don't like it, it doesn't really impact this season. Not really. What it's going to impact more than anything else is future series and how this plays out and how it is utilized and touched on and what it results in. So it's like, <laughs> it's like an election year. If the results of an election aren't the one that you like, you may get really grumpy about the year the election happened in, like say 2020, the one that we're in now. If the election, whatever your stance is, wherever you fall, if the election results are not the ones that you want, you may be like, oh man, 2020 sucks. But you know what? News for you. The bad result of that, all the things that are going to result from the thing you don't like, those aren't going to hit you till the next year or the year after, or the year after. So that's kind of how I'm viewing the timeless child thing right now. I still don't like it, and I am gonna knock series 12 a little bit for introducing the idea, but ultimately, I can only knock it so much because it really was only until the specifics of it got revealed in the latter half of the very last episode that I got infuriated. So, I don't want to dock the entire series because the build-up to it was well done. The thing that it was building up to, I don't like. <sighs> I want to make the allowance that maybe how this will pan out will be done in a way that is far better than I can imagine. I'm not going to blindly hope for that, and I'm sure as heck not going to assume it's going to be the case. I need it to show me that it can be that. But... I'm not going to rule out that possibility. I'm still thinking, like, I just, I dislike this idea so much to my core. I'm, I, I can't help but be really nervous about anything that comes out after this that picks up after it. But that was literally, like, the last 30 minutes 
of, you know, nine plus hours worth of television. So, I can't knock the series too much for that. As angry as I got in that review. And while I've calmed down, I'm not any more okay <laughs> with that. Just to be clear. But overall, Series 12, I think it was a big step up. It felt like a much surer hand. Series 11 felt like it was stripping things down, but didn't know what to rebuild itself as. This feels like it has a lot more confidence behind it. It had a lot more sense of purpose behind it. And not just because there was an overarching story, although that is part of it. It felt like things were being done for a reason, for a character reason, for a tone and world reason, for a thematic reason. Whereas a lot of series 11, I, I can look at a lot of those episodes and go, I don't, I don't really know why you decided to do that. Good or bad, it's just kind of there. Series 12 isn't just kind of there. Series 12 is a lot bolder and a lot, uh, a lot more creative and a lot less middling, a lot more daring. It's daring to go into an area that, uh, I'm not sure I want the, well, I know I don't want the show to go to, and I'm not sure how well it can be done, but there is something to be said for going boldly in a questionable direction versus sitting around in the safe zone. Series 12 didn't do the latter. So, I don't know how happy I can say I am with the series overall, but I like the trajectory of, if not the narrative, thanks to that twist, at least the quality of the show. This felt much better than series 11 did in almost every area. While I'm still trying to wrap my head around this, um, this doctor in a lot of ways, I feel like I'm starting to get a hold of her. Yaz was done much better. Things are, things are coming together. And hopefully they'll continue to do so even more in the next series. We'll see next year. <sighs> the weights between these things, man. God. Those are my overall thoughts on Series 12. Come on back, um, I think, to tomorrow? Can I remember my own schedule? Something like that for my ranking of the of the episodes. Um, but in the meantime, whatever your thoughts are, drop something on down in the comments. Let's talk about it. A bunch of stuff to do. Like, subscribe, share this around. Um, maybe check out my Patreon or my Amazon wish list, or I've got a P.O. box if you want to send me stuff because it is my birthday this month and I will be opening up things on a live stream on the 24th. Um, so, you know, maybe tune in for that. Uh, but for right now, uh, I'll leave it at that. And you don't have to do any of that stuff because end of the day, folks, you're the council and I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.